Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and today I'm going to jump into just a very, very basic tutorial on how you can bring in designs from a drawing app, such as Procreate or other drawing apps that you could save as a file type that Silhouette could open. So I am using Procreate on my iPad. I have just an iPad, I have my Apple Pencil, um, but you could use any tablet with a drawing program that could export a design such as a JPEG, PNG. If it exports as an SVG, even better, Procreate, uh, um, we're going to be working with the transparent PNG. So I just, this is a very, very basic I drew a design and wanted to etch it with my curio on acrylic and I wanted a B path. So I'm just going to use that as the very, very basic design. I recommend using very basic things when you are designing or when you're first learning something. And that's going to be a way you can pick up new techniques and new tips and not overcomplicate things as you're learning them. So again, this is just a very, very basic. I am not an artist. I am not I am very much out of practice of drawing with a hand. And then you throw in the electronic aspect of drawing on an iPad, and that's a little bit different to get used to than pen and paper too. So it's just a very, very basic tutorial. The first thing that I am going to start with, um, again, I'm just using my pencil. You can use a stylus if you're using another program. I'm gonna take this um, little screen out of here. So I am going to, um, be able to show you, I'm going to highlight it on my screen with my cursor as I touch because you can't actually see me using the, the um, Apple Pencil or you don't even need a pencil in this case, but I'm going to first start out by using a new um, canvas size. Now, the one thing that I want to talk to you or mention is that um, when you're creating a file as a JPEG or a PNG file, you need to keep in mind your file size or your um, design size. When you save as a JPEG or a PNG, it is a set file size. So you could scale it down, but it is made up of pixels. So if you try to scale that up, you're just going to be increasing those pixel sizes, which is where you get your blurry edges or your image is no longer the same resolution and same image. So a JPEG or PNG file is a flattened graphic um, file. It's a photo. It's not like an SVG file, which adjusts the um, dimensions or the edges of your design as you scale it up and scale it down because it's called a scalable vector graphic. PNG and JPEG images are a set size. So keep that in mind when you are designing on your canvas size. For today's tutorial, I'm just going to use a five by seven size. If you're working on an iPad or iPhone, you can pinch to uh, zoom in and zoom out. So that's what all I'm doing here. I can rotate my mat. I, I actually put two dots on it so I can undo that, but it works the same on iPhone. Um, you know, you can zoom in or zoom out on your canvas, just depending on your um, device that you're using. I am going to open up this little layers panel is the second icon up here. So if I open it up, you can see that I have layers. I can add layers with the plus sign. This is like a pancake stack. So every time you add a new layer, you are you know, creating another layer onto that pancake stack. It's, it goes from bottom to top. So each layer builds on itself. You can rearrange layers. This is not a in-depth Procreate tutorial. I'm just showing you how you can take a basic drawing, bring it into the Silhouette software and turn it into a cut file or a design you can use. We're gonna be working with just two layers today. So right now I'm gonna just start on layer one. And then all I'm gonna do is I just have a monoline pencil. That's all I'm gonna be using today. Very, very basic. I just need a basic line. All I wanted was a B path. You know, the little dashed line that follows behind a B where it's been. That's all I needed for my design, but I wanted to use my own creation. So I'm just gonna take my pencil or my finger, whichever one you're using, and I'm going to draw a B line. Very, very basic, very simple line. 
on my screen. The great part about digital and with these um, iPad apps and things like that is if I don't like it, I could always just hit undo. And then I could start over again. So then I could just draw another B path until you have it like you like, you would like it. I'm gonna come up here back to the layers panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a new layer. This layer one here is going to be like my template. And this is gonna be what I use to draw the dash line on. Me personally, I couldn't just draw the dashed line. It didn't look good in my opinion because I didn't have a path to follow. So if I create a solid line, then I could draw my path easier. So every design you create, you're not necessarily going to have these two layers. This is just the example I'm using on how I drew it and then how we're gonna take it into the software. If I wanna change something with the layer, I'm gonna use these options. I'm actually gonna click on this N here and I'm going to decrease the opacity so that it is decreased on the screen because I'm just going to be using this as my template. Now I wanna make sure that layer two is selected because that's the layer I want to draw on. So I'm going to use layer two. And now I can take, I'm going to increase the size of my pencil just a little bit by dragging that up. And then I'm going to take, and I'm just going to start drawing on either end and use this as my guide. Again, every design you do is different. And if you are better at drawing, probably are than I am, you could just maybe draw a dashed line. This just gives you a little glimpse into procreate or how I created something. Everybody's going to have what works best for them. There are some very, very talented people out there with procreate or design apps and drawing apps. So now I've just created my little dash line. If I click back up here on my layers panel, I can uncheck my bottom layer, that's my template, and now I'll be able to see what my drawing actually looks like. So, you know, everybody's style is different and whether it's perfect or not, it just depends on the design that you're working with. So I had a specific design in mind and I had a specific size acrylic that I wanted to use this on. So I kind of knew what path I wanted for this B design. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click back up here on this layers panel. And I'm gonna turn the background layer off. And what you're gonna see there on the screen then is now I just have my black B dashed line. Black is always going to trace better in the software than any other color. Other colors, you've probably experienced it. You're gonna to need to change the settings on your um, trace panel in order to get it to pick up those colors. So when you're just designing basic things, that you want to trace in the Silhouette software, black is always going to be the best trace. Now I'm going to click on this little wrench in the top and then under the share icon, I'm going to share this design with myself. So I have turned off the white background. So it's going to import, if I come down here and I choose the PNG under shared layers, it's going to share just this layer that I have turned on. So it's going to share what I have on my screen right now. If I were to choose these other options up here, it could come in with a white background or the layers um, flattened together, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to choose this PNG file under shared layers. If you're in another program on another device, you wanna look for a PNG file that saves with a transparent background. That's going to give you the best trace, but if you're using only black, you could get away with saving it as a JPEG as well. It'll still trace, um, it just depends on the quality of the lines and things like that. Today's example, we're gonna use this PNG files. So if I choose PNG files, it's gonna say exported. I am just going to choose the mail option for today's tutorial, and I'm going to email that to myself. But you could also use 
this little thing here could go to my um, Google Drive. However, you decide to save that to get it to your computer to pull it up in the Silhouette software. That is completely, you're gonna have to decide what works best for you. But you can see here, there's a lot of other options. Here's my Google Drive. You can do it through Chrome. Um, AirDrop if you're on a Mac. Um, I'm just gonna use the mail option. So I'm just going to email that to myself. So if I just email this to myself, it's going to export successfully. Now I'm done with my iPad. I'm done with my pencil. I can set that aside. I have emailed it to myself and I'm going to switch over here and share my screen on the computer. So if I switch over my web browser, and then you can see this is telling me I've already emailed it to myself once. This one's a new one. So in Google, it just condenses those into the email. If I click on it, it would show me two emails. So this second one I just received a minute ago and I'm going to click on the download button. And then you can see that I've done this before. Um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just name this BPATH3. And you can see it's a PNG file, save, and then I have my design. So now when I switch over to the Silhouette software, you can see I've already been testing this. Um, sometimes when you record, things don't work out properly. And so you end up recording more than once. So I'm going to open and then I'm going to choose the BPATH3, which is the one I just downloaded. So you can see here, I have my BPATH. Now, if you are using a version of 4.4 software, you have the option to turn on auto trace for a transparent PNG file. In early versions of version 4.4, there were some bugs that would um, crash your software. With this auto trace, you need to keep in mind that you are adding data to that file exponentially when you use the auto trace feature. So there's still a couple bugs in the auto trace feature. It is a neat feature and I'll show you that here in just a second. Since I was recording this before, my head was in the way of showing some things, so I'm re-recording it and my auto trace is currently off. I am using, if you wanna find your version, I'm under help on a Windows PC or under Silhouette Studio in the top left on a Mac and choose about Silhouette Studio. I'm actually using a beta version that I was testing. That was what it was open on my computer. But in the bottom right corner in this gear icon is your preferences panel. And if you choose import, I currently have auto trace turned off. That's why it didn't come in traced. So first I'm gonna show you how to work with that. So anybody in any software version could do this. So I'm gonna close this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here to the trace panel, which either looks like a piece of toast or a butterfly. I'm going to open that trace panel and then I'm going to click select trace area. When I do, my cursor is going to change to a plus sign. I'm going to left click and drag across the entire design. And I'm actually going to zoom in here. Because your software traces black the best. You can see that it's almost got all the edges. In here, you can see that it's a little rough around the edges and that is also because of the way I drew it or the way I drew in the program. A uh, PNG file is made up of those pixels. So it's, it's, you're seeing those pixels being traced. You can use your threshold. Threshold is usually the only one that I ever really play with. But if I increase this threshold, you're gonna see it get a little bit smoother, kind of sorta. Depends on the look you're going for. For me, I was etching it. It wasn't gonna really matter. It's a B path. It's kind of erratic. It doesn't need to be smooth lines. I could do some edit points and stuff like that and get them smoother, but for this tutorial, I really don't need it. So I'm going to actually zoom back out here and 
Once I have all the yellow that I want traced, I can click on trace. And then what you're going to see is I'm going to pull the original away and I have a traced image. If I come over here, select the cut line, come over here and choose my fill color and black, you can see that my image looks exactly like my PNG file, except it has a red cut border around it. If I click on send in the top right corner, you can see over on this side over here that I now have a cut line and I have one that is just my PNG image. This is not a cut line. There are no bold red cut lines around it. So I have taken a PNG file and I have turned it into a cut file. The next thing I wanna show you here is if I were to turn on, so I'm gonna click on the preferences gear icon again in the bottom right corner of my design tab and choose import. If I choose auto trace and check that and click apply and then okay, I am going to come up here to my file, open. I'm gonna choose that same B path. It's gonna open on a new design mat. And you can see, since I turned on auto trace, it automatically traced that. So now if I click on send, I already have cut lines. But what you wanna keep in mind here is there are still some bugs in that auto trace feature. And if you are doing an image that is very distressed, or you're using say like a brush that has a distressed edge look, that is going to be more data when it is traced. So auto trace can take a little bit more time for your computer to process, save any file before you start with auto trace, just in case it crashes the software. It is a very heavy data usage tool. It's can be very nice and very great, um, but sometimes old school tracing is still a good option as well. Check out the full written tutorial on my silhouette-secrets.com blog. And I have a little free design that I have drawn in the software program that's a little more exciting than this B path. It's still very, very basic, but I'm going to give that free design to you so that you can practice with the technique and the files. This technique will work for any PNG files that you were to bring in um, or JPEG files. You, and black is going to be the best thing that traces. So keep that in mind when you are using images like that. Hope the tips have helped. I wanna thank you for joining me and have a great day.